Hello. I love you, Richard. Sybil? I love you. I know. I want you to come back. I know. Will you come back? We've tried all that. I haven't even begun to try. But I know you'll come back. Good night, my darling. Consider salmon mousse and aspic. Contemplate asparagus feuilletage and mushrooms stuffed with escargot. Think about shrimp puffs. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Sushi bites, spinach quiche. How am I doing? Is my inferiority complex showing? <laughs> Ugh. Nothing to it. You want to dazzle your friends? Just call Sybil and Patty. Did you really start all this in your own kitchen? Sybil's kitchen. Ah, Viking daggers. Specialty of the house. Ah. Looks like little lobster tails. At two bucks a bite, they're called Viking daggers. Mmm. Can I mention the price in my story? Price, my dear Kate Colombo, is what makes the difference. The bigger, the better. If we were to charge less, Mrs. Fischetti would buy her party from someone who charges more. <laughs> that is known as the royal road to success. But don't print that in your story. Not even in a neighborhood newspaper. <laughs> you like caviar? The only time I ever tasted it was my cousin's wedding. Well, it's caviar time again. Lump fish or beluga? What's the difference? Oh, about $20 an ounce. That's some difference. Uh-huh. Wait till you taste it. Nice? Mm-hmm. Mm. Salty? Sort of. If I ate that, I'd be as sick as a dog. Allergy. Thank God I'm not allergic to beluga. <laughs> the gift of the Caspian sturgeon. Oh, I think I'm an addict. <laughs> so is Mrs. Fischetti. $3,000 worth. And you're on your own. Kate, you still want to play secret agent at the party tonight? That's what I want. Just don't print that in your story, either. <laughs> Spanish crepes, peach duckling, tornadoes grenadine, glazed carrots, spinach souffle, brie, Baked Alaskas, patisserie, chocolate-dipped strawberries, and assorted wines and liqueurs. Oh, and the caviar. Beluga, of course. Grand total, $12,385. Ah, Mrs. Fischetti, is everything all right? I don't know how you girls do it. Well, you make it fun, dear. Fun for everybody. <laughs> Will I see you tonight? Oh, just try keeping us away. Ah, we'll make it the best ever. <laughs> Deal, Sybil? Whose deal? Yours and mine. Oh, I'm thinking about it. Buy me out. Why should I? You enjoy the business. You know how. I'll enjoy the money. Hmm. I know how to do that. But how can I give up a partner like you? Someday you'll cater my wedding. Oh? Anyone I know? I'm speculating. Ah. Buy my half. I'll be quite a catch. I'll let you know. You say. I will. I really will. You'd better, kiddo. Andrea, call Desmond and son. Tell them I want that watch, the $2,600 one. And I want it engraved. To Richard, welcome back, darling, and tomorrow's date.
gotcha. Ah, how'd I look? Successful businesswoman plots bright future. What's next on the agenda? Uh, successful housewife concludes part-time journalism, picks up daughter at school. Just another couple of shots and I'm through. Kate, no cameras tonight. No, ma'am. before you put it out. How's it going, Patty? Madhouse. We're short on Viking daggers. We can't be. Right. You tell Mrs. Fischetti. Oh, no. Don't let you in the kitchen. Come on, now go to bed. Oh, honey. Would you like an hors d'oeuvre? May I have those two bags down at that end? Thank you. <laughs> Taking notes? Taking trays. Well, would you take this one, please? Put it somewhere really nice. Right. Thank you. Excuse me. Patty. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> May it always be like this for us. Champagne in one hand and caviar in the other. <laughs> what was that? 
caviar. <laughs> I think it was lumpfish. Mm. Oh, no. Sybil, I'm gonna be sick. Come on, come on. Let's get you out of here. Mm. Are you all right? No, she'll be fine. She just needs some air. Let me worry about the daggers. I'll be right back. You all right? Just let me get the door. Okay, can you get in? Now, just sit there and breathe deeply. I'll be right back. Easy. Sybil! Sybil! Everyone wants more daggers. Where are they? Oh, just a small glitch, Mrs. Fischetti. You enjoy your party, I'll drive back to the plant and get them myself. When? Right now, dear. Right now. Oh, Sybil. How's Pat? Oh, she's fine. The air cleared her head. Too much champagne on an empty stomach. She's on her way home right now. Oh, now listen. You hold the fort. I'll be right back. For King and Cunt. of oblivion, darling. What? We fought for everything we ever wanted, you and I. The only difference is I'm still fighting. I feel bad. Me too, Patty. <laughs> Me too. My friend and my husband. You and Richard. You and Richard. No, no. Please. I'm not going to kid your wedding, Patty. There isn't going to be any wedding. There isn't even going to be any Patty. Sybil, I'm sick. I want Richard back. I never should have trusted him. But I trusted you. Viking daggers have arrived, madame. Thank you, dear. Isn't it a lovely evening? Killed her. You loved her. Damn Viking daggers. 
I never should have let her drive home alone. Once I dropped my purse at a street corner. When I picked it up, the light turned red. While I was waiting, I saw someone I hadn't seen in a long time. It changed my whole day. It changed my whole life. It changed everybody's life. That's how World War III got started. My fault. I dropped my purse. <sighs> what are you even doing here? I'm just helping a new friend feel better about an old friend. She was leaving the business, you know. We had just decided last night. Whole new life for Patty. Yeah. She told me she was getting married. What? Her marriage in a few days. Was he been told yet, her fiancé? No, I... I don't know. I never met him. Must have been somebody new. Ah. Uh. We'll get out of here in just a minute. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. I was just telling Mrs. Colombo here. We don't have any information about a fur coat. A coat? Oh, I know you've forgotten about it. Your mink coat. You put it around Patty last night, and you didn't have it when you came back with the daggers. Oh, I don't care about the coat. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know either, ma'am. Sorry. my asking. Oh, no, it was very thoughtful of you. Hello, Sybil. Hello, Richard. Will you talk to me? was final this morning midnight last night I know you wanted me Sybil like a child wants a toy and you gave me everything I wanted but I just couldn't live like that anymore that agreement you asked me to sign before we were married. A business agreement. Richard belongs to Sybil, but nothing belongs to Richard. It was humiliating. And so I left you. I just forgot to take one thing into consideration. And what was that, Richard? I love you. Welcome home, darling. Good evening, Miss Einstein. Good evening. Guess what? What? Bedtime is upon us. Oh, Freddy. It's a mathematical fact. Why? Because my father and I have some very important business to discuss. Daddy's coming home early for a change. No, he isn't. Excuse me? He called, Father. You were in the shower. 
He has to work all night. He does? Yes. Terrific. Well, how do you feel about caviar and lobster tails? What's caviar? Fish eggs. Yeah. Mm, that's what you think. Walk this way, please. Is that caviar? That was caviar. Door. You I never want to see again. Get out! That. A delivery man brought it. Do I still have to go to bed? Not if you watch television. I was by all your consideration. The coat you asked about wasn't in Patty's car at all. It was in mine. I'd forgotten she gave it back before she drove away. For me, it would always be a painful reminder of last night. I don't suppose we'll be seeing much more of each other. We both have our own lives to live. So please accept this little parting gift as a simple thank you. Champagne in one hand, and caviar in the other. I'll get it, darling. Ah, oh, thank you, sweetheart. How does it look? Smashing. I thought so too, but 
I cannot accept it. And that's that. Oh, Kate. Have you met Richard? Yes, at the door. Ex-husband, recent. Husband to be. Very recent. Would you like some champagne? Oh, no, no, thanks. I just dropped by to return Sybil's coat. She gave you the coat? Kate works for a newspaper. A neighborhood newspaper. And uh, she's doing a story on the business. Must be some story. <laughs> well, I'll let you two ladies talk. I think I've just interrupted a magic moment. Yes. You should have seen what I had planned for tonight. <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you for the very nice thought. And you go on with whatever it was you were doing. <laughs> Before we print it. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. He is very handsome. Yes, isn't he? <laughs> Good night, Sybil. Good, Good night, Kate. A friend of Patty's. Well, yes, I was her attorney. Oh. Then you were, uh, you were very close to each other, I mean. Well, we were planning her financial future. Uh, Norman, the first race goes off at one o'clock, dear. Oh, excuse me. Just to tell the time with. 
Want to swim? Want you ladies. Sybil's on her way home. Can I help? Maybe. I was at the funeral home yesterday. Were you there? I didn't see you. I saw you. I did. And Sybil? Huh? I saw everybody except the man. What man? The one Patty was going to marry. I mean, no suitable candidate arrived. Who is he? Beats me. She was Sybil's friend. Why do you care? The story I'm doing on the business. Patty's death is right in the middle of it. I'm just trying to make the pieces fit. It's like a puzzle. Make everything come out even. All sounds very compulsive to me. You think that sounds compulsive? You ought to see me in the kitchen. of the mind of passion, and the dog ate it. <laughs> All of it. Whammo. Gone. Beluga? Oh, thank you very much, sir. No, it was lumpfish. I remember, before I married Sybil, there was this girl. Oh, she was a sensational girl. We were spending a few days at the Sultan's Palace in Palm Springs. The first night I wanted to make very special. I ordered caviar, champagne, everything I could think of. Turns out this girl was allergic to caviar. I have never seen anybody so sick in my whole life. I called the doctor. I spent so much time with that doctor that when we left Palm Springs, he asked me to write to him. <laughs> oh, dear. School's out. Promised my daughter I'd teach her how to knit. Let's do something grand. Like? Like charter a private railroad car, tour the country in sybaritic luxury. What do you say? Do you like trains? Richard. Richard, what? I must have left it by the pool. Oh, darling. Where were you? Is it still there? I was talking to your friend, Kate. Over there. Can you see it? No. I don't think so. Darling, it cost a fortune. Sib, I'm looking. I'll get it. Angel, we were just looking for it. I was halfway home when I remembered he left it by the pool. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Kate? Kate. Thank you, darling. Are you ready to plan our train trip? I've been making plans ever since you mentioned it. Ever think of moving your family to New York? Is it that bad, Mr. Alden? It's that good, Mrs. Colombo. I just think you ought to live a little closer to all these big magazines. One of them might devote an entire issue to fabulous, simple, and incredible Patty. However, if you'll consider running this exhaustive study, then the weekly advertiser will have to cut it down a little. How little? 500 words, I'll take. Oh. I've got these pictures here. Very nice, Mrs. Colombo. Pick one. One? One, singular. I'll run it in black and white. One. Right. What do you think? 
Nice. Mm. Maybe this one. Nice. Mr. Alden. Nice. I wonder where I can get a blow-up of this. Don't need a blow-up. It's too big already. No. Oh. I mean, for me. Falling in love with your own word? It's interesting. Oh, Sybil, it's Kate Colombo. Oh, hello, Kate. Listen, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt, but I think I've got some very interesting news for you. About what? About Patty. Can I see you tonight? I'll meet you at your office. I can't get away until my husband gets home to take care of Jenny. Uh, I, Kate, I have four affairs scheduled for tonight. Oh, that's okay, Sybil. I'll wait for you. Thanks a lot. Oh, and give my regards to Richard, would you? Bye. Your secretary did all this. She said you'd insist. I would have. Beluga. Ah, you're becoming quite an expert. The gift of the Caspian sturgeon. Tell me your interesting news. Oh, about Patty? Hmm, about Patty. Well, you don't have to blame yourself anymore for being responsible for Patty's accident. You don't even have to have any more bad memories about this. I never should have let Patty drive home alone. Nothing's ever going to change that. Oh. She wasn't drunk, you know. It wasn't the champagne at all. No? I think she was ill. Oh, she would have told me. Her allergy to caviar, lump fish. But Patty had never eaten lumpfish. Besides, there was only beluga at the party. Except for one tray of lumpfish hors d'oeuvres. Remember, you asked me to carry the tray out of the kitchen. Oh, Kate, that's not possible. Mrs. Fischetti only ordered beluga. I'll tell you a secret. I sneaked one of those hors d'oeuvres myself. Oh, did you? From that very same tray, the one where you and Patty were talking, and it tasted salty. I remember I had to get a glass of water in the kitchen. I'm going to have to speak to my crew about this. First, they mess up on the Viking daggers, and then they send the wrong caviar. Oh, no, no. They didn't send it. I think it came in this jar. Do you see the little bits of caviar still in the jar? Do you see the lumpfish? Just one tray of lumpfish caviar in the whole party. Huh. Where did it come from, your little jar of lump fish? It is the strangest thing, Sybil. What? I found it in the pocket of your fur coat. The one you tried to bribe me with, not to ask too many questions. Kate, are you saying that I poisoned Patty? Oh, no. Oh, oh no, no, no. Heavens, no. I think you were just trying to make her ill to get her out to the car, to drive her to the train crossing. Oh, that's a cruel thought. Why would I do something like that? More champagne. Oh, thank you. Well, I think it had something to do with Patty's mysterious fiance. Ah, the one who never showed up at the funeral home. Oh, he showed up, Sybil. He was with you. That day by the pool, when Richard forgot his watch, he told me about a girl he was with in Palm Springs at the Sultan's Palace, oh, before you were married. She was allergic to caviar, but the Sultan's Palace wasn't built until eight months ago now. Do you think the girl could have been Patty? And the man she was going to marry was Richard. And if he were? Well, then, Patty's death wasn't an accident. Somebody murdered her. Did Patty take Richard away from you? Maybe they deserved each other. 
But, Kate, now you know what time Patty was killed. I couldn't possibly have been there, could I? I was driving back to the plant for the Viking daggers, remember? Oh, the lobster tails. Yes. The Viking daggers. Yes. They were in the truck all the time. The whole order for Mrs. Vichetti. You remember? I was taking pictures that day out by the loading dock. Well, there's the rack being loaded. I had this part blown up. The police did it for me. Did they? The daggers. The lobster tails. Hmm. If they were on the truck, locked away maybe, then you didn't have to go back to the plant. <sighs> you know, you're very good at puzzles. <gasps> But it's all very abstract. All puzzle, no proof. But then there's the watch. To Richard, welcome back, darling. And the date. The day after Patty was killed. But you knew Patty and Richard were going to be married, and you couldn't know ahead of time that he'd come back to you the day after she died unless you planned to murder Patty at the train crossing. You planned it, Sybil, and you did it. I see. How did you get Richard's watch? Oh, it isn't Richard's. This one belongs to my husband's uncle, Nick, the commodity broker. Hello? Sam? Oh, one moment, please. It's Richard. Yes, Richard. Darling, I'm going to have to break you of this working habit. Mm. Wait until you hear what I have planned for tonight. What? Doors are locked. Telephone is off the hook. And you're in my arms. Now, what do you think of that? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> 